creatine. Is creatine a steroid? Do you know what, yeah? If I was taking creatine living at home, my mom for sure would think it's a steroid. So I'm going to say this is for this is for the parents, 100%. So in my previous videos, we discussed what is creatine, how it's naturally in your body anyways, um, loading phase. We discussed a whole bunch of things to check out. But today, we'll look into the chemical structure of it. About creatine in this way, they're referring to it as an anab anabolic steroid. <laughs> I don't know why I struggled. Which is a performance enhancing drug. And normally when we talk about people taking steroids when it comes to fitness, we're talking about a chemically made version of testosterone that helps to increase muscle mass and helps to decrease fat as well. Whilst creatine is about ATP production, so a completely different purpose. So whilst creatine may give similar results to a, you know, they are completely different when it comes to the chemical structure and how they work in the body. Steroids is a drug, creatine is not. It is one of the most researched fitness supplement out there and the International Society of Sports Nutrition deem it as safe. There are so many studies on creatine. If it was going to be harmful, then we would have found out about it for now. Obviously, if you take a stupid dose, then yes, it will have side effects. But if you take a reasonable dose and you take a dose that's suitable for your body, then it's all good. So creatine is not a steroid. I hope I don't get blocked for this video. Creatine. Do you need to drink more water whilst taking creatine? The short answer is no. It's a myth. Let's talk about it. So the reason why people may think you need to drink more water whilst taking creatine is because in a previous video, well not because of me, but I'm saying in a previous video we discussed how creatine is this. Man can't pronounce the word, so yes. Basically what this word means, the one that I can't pronounce, is that it takes water from a high concentration area and puts it in a low concentration area. So from that, you know, I understand the logic where, okay, guess you need to drink more water, but you don't. So when we look into the academic studies of it, it will look into dehydration and muscle cramping. The more dehydrated you are, the more likely you are to um, have muscle cramps and muscle strains and joint strains and all of that. So that's what these studies will look into. So the first study I looked at was Greenwood et al. So Greenwood et al looked at 219 American football athletes and two groups in them. So one of them was taking creatine, one group was taking creatine, and the other group weren't taking creatine. The group was taking creatine, went on a loading phase, and then had a maintenance phase. Loading phase, I think, was like 15.75 grams. And then once the loading phase was done, then they took five grams for the maintenance stage. Now with these athletes, they were playing um, between eight to 40 degrees. So obviously, if they were playing in hot weathers and they were hydrated before the hydration was fine, if you add creatine, then they're going to be even more dehydrated, right? Mm. So they did this study over a course of three years, and they looked at the amount of injuries, the group that took creatine and the group that didn't take creatine. And they found that the group that did take creatine had less injuries than the group that didn't. So creatine did not increase dehydration or muscle cramping. Jay Volk et al. I'm so sorry if I pronounced his name wrong, I probably did. Also looked at creatine and dehydration. His participants, oh, it's how like torture, you know. They did 35 minutes of cycling in 37 degrees heat. I could never, I did not like cycling, no way. And so it had no effect compared to the group that took creatine and the group that had a placebo. And they measured the dehydration levels by looking at blood, by focusing on electrolytes. And JV Dablo, I'm going to link this all, don't worry. He looked at creatine and dehydration in a clinical setting, so all external variables are controlled. Look at my A-level psychology terms coming out. He concluded that creatine can help performance during hot weather. And he looked it into like plasma volume. So, in summary, you don't need to be drinking more water if you're taking creatine. Now, if you're taking creatine and you're not drinking enough water, I recommend you drink enough water just because, not because of the creatine element, it's just good to be hydrated. So, yeah. Creatine. Do you need a creatine loading phase or is that a whole load of shite? Welcome to the creatine series where we talk about everything creatine. Is a loading phase needed? Straight up, no. Before you come for me, let me get all scientific with evidence and all of that. See, in my previous videos, we spoke about how creatine is one of the most researched supplements out there. So obviously loading phases have been researched as well. For those who don't know, what is creatine loading? 
is when you take a higher dose of creatine, maybe about 20 to 25 grams for about five to seven days. And this will be split throughout the day. Then after the five to seven days, you end up on a maintenance stage. Some take about three to five grams during maintenance. So the idea of a loading phase is to basically saturate your body quickly with creatine. Harris et al. showed that the loading phase helped to increase muscle creatine stores. This then pretty much started the whole interest in loading. So naturally, other people started to research. Holtman et al. looked at creatine loading in men and saw that creatine levels in the body was the same regardless if someone took a loading phase or not. He looked at the maintenance dose for 78 days and a loading period of 6 days, measured their creatine levels and saw it was the same. So what does the research overall show? Not just these two people, but overall, what does it actually show? It shows that supplementing 3 to 5 grams will give you the same effect as someone who did a loading phase. So once someone goes on the maintenance phase, they're going to have the same amount of creatine levels as someone who only has been on a maintenance stage and didn't even do the whole loading stage. The only difference is that when someone does a loading phase, it just increases creatine levels quickly. So if you were to skip the whole loading phase and you just want to go to a maintenance dose, 3 to 5 grams, it will take you about 3 to 4 weeks to hit the same creatine level storage as someone who went through the quicker process of going for a loading phase. So you don't really need a loading phase. Now before anyone comes for me, I'm not saying, you know, eliminate loading phases completely. I'm just saying a loading phase is suitable if you want to build up your creatine levels quickly. For example, if you had a bodybuilding competition coming up or any sort of competition coming up really fast, you need to increase your creatine levels, then sure, it's beneficial. If not, you don't really need it. You can just start three to five grams and just maintain that. It's all good. And of course, all of my research will be on screen. Welcome to Creatine 101. Today, let's talk about is creatine safe? Oh my god, or will it make you bold? In my previous video, which I'll link in the caption, we spoke about what is creatine and what does it do to our body. So is creatine safe? You might hear, our creatine is going to make you lose your hair. It can cause kidney damage. It can lead to bloating. <laughs> the hair part, man. It can make you dehydrated. Muscle cramping? Creatine is naturally in our body. And it is one of the most researched sports supplement out there. And it has been used as a supplement since like 1990 or something, I don't know. Research shows that if you take the right dose, then it's safe. We'll talk about each of those little myths in detail. Follow the creatine series for more. We love creatine. Creatine. Can a creatine make you bold? We don't want to be losing our hair. No man, I go through a nice step process just before I come out the shower. And then after I come out the shower, there's even more things. So this is what happened, right? Some bloke in 2009 called Van de Meer, and then he did a bunch of other people, so Van de Meer et al. He concluded that creatine supplement increased the risk of conversion of testosterone to, I can't pronounce it, dehydrotesterone. I'll just put it on screen. Let's call it DHT. So basically, what man tried to say is, right, high levels of DHT could lead to hair loss. And there's some research that says that high levels of DHT can lead to hair loss. So the man just put one on one together and it was like, yep, can cause hair loss. And that's the only study that's been done on that. Basically, he took male rugby players and he got them to take 25 grams for 7 days. And then 5 grams for 14 days. So he found that after 7 days, the DHT increased by like 56% and remained high after the 14 days maintenance dose. And because they're saying DHT links to hair loss, the study got a lot of attention. But in reality, it was just one study. People have tried to replicate it since and they haven't gotten the same results. Also, strength training can increase DHT. Temporarily, don't worry about it. So there actually isn't any proof that creatine can cause hair loss. So don't worry about it. So you can take creatine and be a boss at the gym and still keep all your hair, it's all good. Long story short, yeah, it's not true, so don't worry about it. Creatine. Welcome to Creatine 101. Can creatine make you bloat? It better not do. Listen, you can be bloated for lots of reasons. Excess gas, constipation, stomach acid levels, underlining health condition. But creatine has been linked to water retention, and water retention could make you bloat. So let's talk about it. Creatine is a... this. <laughs> I can't pronounce it, I'm scared to pronounce it wrong. But basically, it's that active substance. 
Basically what it means is it takes water from a high concentration area and puts it in a low concentration area. So with that in mind, in theory, it could technically increase water retention, which could be making you bloat. Let's look at academic studies because, you know, we're saying it could, but does it? So studies that research um, creatine with water retention look into total body water, extracellular body water, and intracellular water. So they've looked at taking creatine at 20 grams for six days, and they found that it does cause water retention. And they looked at three days at the same dosage and saw it can lead to water retention. And they determined this because there was an increase in that body weight intracellular and extracellular thing. So yes, it's been assumed from that that it can cause water retention. But, 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 bear with me, we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere, but. But obviously that was only short term, wasn't it? But other studies that examined um, water retention and creatine five weeks or longer did not see an increase of body water. So what can we conclude? That if you were to do a loading phase, then yes, temporarily, you may be holding on to more water, water retention. So during your loading phase, you could be bloated. But you should be fine during your maintenance stage. So in summary, it technically doesn't cause water retention. And you don't have to go on a loading phase anyways. You can just start off at 3 grams and keep it like that. Creatine 101 what is creatine and what does it do? You know it's a supplement weightlifters take. But why did it take it exactly? Creatine is an amino acid. And amino acids are molecules that form protein. We have 20 amino acids in our bodies. And three of those amino acids form creatine. So yes, it's already naturally in our body. It's naturally occurring. So don't worry parents, your child isn't taking it. We naturally produce like 1 to 2 grams of creatine a day and it could also be found in foods such as red meat and fish. Remember when I said amino acids form proteins? Cool, so remember that now when we speak about what creatine actually does to the body. Ah, oh, not my LEDs shining through my glasses, man. Ah. Oh. Well, muscle is built by protein and muscles need fuel to work. Creatine supports our muscles during exercise to produce energy. And ATP is the primary source of energy for cells. So it basically gives energy to our muscles. And those who mainly take creatine are those who perform high explosive movements for like short duration, like short bursts of high intensity movements, such as CrossFit and weightlifting. So now you know what creatine is. Also, so I know because you know hustle and all that. If you want to purchase creatine, I now rep my protein. I've got discount link and code. My bio, go check it out.